How's that for the beginning of a, of a slide? When you work with electronics, do you know what's going on in all this stuff? Can you look at a microcontroller and tell what's going on? Not very well. You are blind. What is the first and foremost piece of equipment that you need to figure out what's going on with anything electrical? You need a meter. Oh, do I have a picture? A meter. And there is absolutely no excuse for not having one. This is from our buddies at Harbor Freight. The highest price I've ever seen them charge for this is about eight bucks. They're frequently on sale for $1.99, and I've seen them free if you buy something else for 20 bucks. This is, I shouldn't say this is cheap. This is inexpensive. These are very good meters. I put these up against a $400 fluke, and you get the same numbers. And if you step on it, you go out and buy another one. As a matter of fact, if you get two of them, you put them on a board side by side, and it's very easy to wire these so one of them gives you volts and the other one gives you amps at the same time. Just like that. And if you go to trainelectronics.com, you'll see a whole list of articles. There's an article that says Harbor Freight Voltmeter Modification. I use this all the time. I just happen to plug my power in this end, I put the train on this end, I can look at the display and see, oh, it's getting 14 volts and it's drawing 2 amps. What do I have in this thing? Well, the piece of board was probably just as expensive as the meters. I've got a buddy that has about six of these because he has six loops on his train. There's one of these on each loop. He can tell the health of his trains. He knows if he's got a bad axle and the train's drawing two and a half amps, it normally draws two. There's something wrong. No excuse for being blind when it comes to looking at stuff like this. Okay, connectors. Speaking of connectors, I just said don't plug that in backwards. Well, there are better connectors that don't do that. If you need connectors to connect cars together, maybe you have lights in your passenger cars, back to our buddies at Deal Extreme. I'll pass these around. These are great. These are polarized, so you couldn't plug it in backwards. They'll only go in one way. I soldered a couple together. Look at the price. You get a bag of 10 pair for $2.78, including shipping. Now, you can't be in a hurry. It takes a couple weeks to come from China. I don't know what kind of slow boat they use. But that's what you get for less than three bucks, and there's one that you can play around with. Low current, I would say no more than an amp, amp and a half, something like that. What if you want to go for high current? Neil was saying that there's some connectors that he needs to do with, or no, rather, uh, that need high power. Look at these guys. Here's a picture. These little guys come, they're expensive, $6.26 for 10 pair. If you go to some of the Radio Control Hobbies websites, these are like four or five bucks a pair. And they're the exact same thing. Here's one you can put together and pull apart and somewhere there's a little box here here's what you get for your six bucks connectors I use we use these on our modules our HO modules to connect the DCC works beautifully and they are polarized you can't put them in backwards well I guess if you were really really strong but yeah okay third connectors and I hesitated to put this slide up because I didn't want them to run out and if I tell people you know so I bought a thousand of them the other day. I figured, now I can tell you. These are great. Everybody heard of electronic gold mine? It's also called gold mine electronics. These little guys, this is amazing. These are the kind of cables that are inside of your desktop computer that connect the LEDs to the motherboard, but they're already pre-wired. There's a, there's a female connector on either end. It's got an LED in one end and nothing in the other. These are 50 for two bucks. I want to say that again. So when I bought a thousand, it was not a big investment. I use these all the time for connectors. And the little gizmo that plugs into the other end, they also sell that, that little guy. And I'll pass some of those around so you can see them. These are great. Absolutely great. Let's talk about sound. Do you remember the trolley going by ding, ding, ding? 
You heard that guy? Okay, I'm not going to put him back on because it takes a minute. This is great. This is absolutely great. I showed you a year ago a little soundboard that I got from a company called uh, Electronics 123. And it was expensive. It was 10 bucks. Nine something if you bought 10 of them. And it had the ability to plug into a computer with a USB and you could take any MP3 and put on it, I think it was up to 25 seconds of good quality sound. I have 11 of them at Children's Hospital. And they feed into old computer speakers and they do all the sound effects and they're excellent. They've been running for, it'll be two years in May. No problems at all. They just came out with a new one. This one is almost twice as much, it's 17 bucks. It will do up to uh, five, no, 300 seconds of sound, which is what, five minutes? That's of medium quality. If you want it really high quality, it, it cuts that roughly in half. So a couple of minutes, but it has four triggers. And if I push one trigger, let me get this untangled. Clear the area, lasting in 10 seconds. Anybody remember that when I've shot? I had an animation that I did a while ago of a mine explosion. That was me saying that we're going to blow up the mine. That's coming out of that little bitty speaker. What would happen if you put a good set of speakers on it? We use that one when we set up at the Greenberg shows. We have it on a radio control, so if the kids start to reach at the trains, we hit it and scares the bejabbers out of them. Crossing bell. Oh, that's the elephant animation from Children's Hospital. 17 bucks. That's what I've got in here. That is the same board. That is the same speaker. And I've got four triggers that go right into the pickaxe, the, the microcontroller, it's not actually a pickaxe, it's related to it, that says do a four ding bell when you stop and do a two ding bell when you reverse. Could I also have it saying in my voice, you know, leaving Pittsburgh headed for DC or something, whatever you want. Because it's, again, you plug it into your computer and whatever file you want to put on it, you put on it. Here's the thing that's remarkable. Glasses. I'll do it without them. All right. Get this, get this. By the torch. By the torch. Ha! It's one of those catch-22s. You can't find your glasses without your glasses. This thing also, and it, let me see if I have that as the next thing in my, records up to 300 seconds, easily connects to external speaker systems, triggered by push button, blah, blah. Ah. It also can be triggered by Aristocrats Revolution. So if you wanted basic sound, just a horn and a bell, whistle, whatever, in your train, you could get one of these boards. It plugs right into the auxiliary on the Revolution. And I'm going to give this thing, give me a second here. I need different battery. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Ah. See, that's something. Noel, you asked to do something. I should have made you the keeper of the batteries. Okay, got that. And I need to plug that into here. Whoop, I just unplugged it. This is a very inexpensive set of uh, speakers for an iPod that I picked up. We were down in uh, Florida a week or so ago. I think I paid 10 bucks at a dollar store. How can I have a dollar store that charges 10 bucks? Anyway, um, reasonable? Clear the area, blasting in 10 seconds. Would that be cool to have in a building or in, you could put that in a box car behind the revolution, have those pins and you can, I don't know what that is, but I, whatever it is, I recorded it. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Okay, got that shut down. This is one of my favorite tips of all time. How many of you have bought this stuff? How many love it? When you get a credit card in the mail, there's that stuff on the back of it that holds it to the piece of cardboard. 
Some of my less elegant friends call it boogers. <laughs> this is boogers. It's a one inch long strip of semi-permanent adhesive. I use, I go through a roll of this in a year and there's a hundred of these little strips. Give you an idea what you can do with it. That board you're passing around, where's the board that has the little lights on it? That's held together with these boogers. And it, if you've got wires that you're trying to put a locomotive back together again and all the wires go like this, you put a couple of these inside of the engine and you stick the wires to the inside of the engine and they don't come out again. I use it instead of hot melt glue. I use it tons of stuff. I'll pass these around. You're welcome to rip off one of the little guys and play with it to your heart's content. They're wonderful. You may have this one since I already tore that off. Uh, Michaels, I think they're about four bucks and doesn't Michaels run a 40% off coupon every Sunday? So what are you looking at? A couple bucks. Michaels. Uh, and I, there's a couple different brands. I like the one called Dots, and I always get the ones that are purple because it's uh, semi-permanent, they call it. Uh, there's other ones that are, are less permanent I don't like so much, but uh, Michael's 40% off. Okay, uh, next tip. If you are not a soldering person, you probably don't have a good soldering iron. Even if you are a soldering person, spend a couple of bucks. This soldering iron from MPJA, that's Marlin P. Jones, they're down in Florida. There's the item number. It's $47. It's a digital readout, and you can set it for whatever temperature you want, and it'll hold it. Now, for, just for your reference, I, I put my iron at 525 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very hot. You gotta get in and out fast. But for me, it works real well. If you're doing something that's real sensitive, you can turn it down to 400 degrees. And it, say 400 degrees. Digital temperature readout. By the way, the default is Celsius, so I actually keep mine at 360, but yeah. This is the part that has the heating element in it. Seven bucks if you burn it up. I've burned up two of them. I bought five of the handles there in my cabinet. And if you do surface mount, they also sell a surface mount desoldering iron. Those of you who know what I'm talking about know that's a wonderful thing. Okay. More soldering. If you have a wet sponge that you clean your soldering iron with, throw it away. What you want to use, that's our buddies at Deal Extreme again. I'll pass this around. Take it out of the bag. I don't know what it is. Shavings or spindly things of aluminum anodized stuff. You plunge your soldering iron into this dry and it comes out clean. Once a month you turn it upside down, shake out the little pieces of solder and put it back in the cup. Pass that around please. Hey, you can use that on a hot iron, right? I, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And it's expensive, it's uh, with that little base, it's six dollars including shipping. If you just buy the thing, if you have a base of some sort, I think it's about half that. How long does it last? I've got one that's got to be a year and a half old, and I turn my soldering iron on when I get up in the morning and I turn it off when I go to bed at night. So I get a lot of use. Yeah, I have to replace my, my pretty black chair about once a year because my wife gets tired of looking at solder all over it. <laughs> okay, the next one. This is Marlon P. Jones, same guys that do the uh, soldering iron. This is excellent. This is 59 bucks. It is a DC power supply that has dual meters. One of the meters gives you voltage, the other one gives you current. You can adjust the voltage from zero to 18. Is that enough for most train stuff? Yeah, it is. It also does up to three amps. You can also adjust the maximum amount of current that you're gonna feed to your engine. So if you've got an engine, you're not quite sure what's going on, turn the current down to zero, bring the voltage up and slowly increase the current, watch what happens. If all of a sudden it spikes, turn it off. You're probably not gonna burn it up. I use this, I have three of these. Use them all the time. Again, that's something else that gets turned on in the morning and gets turned off when I go to bed at night. Okay, there's a picture. They have a bunch of different meters. This one, though, happens to be 60 bucks, 59.95. And finally, Pablo Picasso said this. And boy, is that me. I don't know how to do half of this stuff when I get an idea, but isn't Google great? 
It knows everything. And there's a lot of resources out there. If you have an idea for something and you want to do it, and you're willing to get your hands dirty and to study a little bit, you can figure it out. Okay, questions? None? Then thank you. Appreciate it.